We are spending $8.3 billion a year on our Medicaid program. And we cannot sustain it. We can. We're spending 40% of our budget on Medicaid. If you count the overhead at, at, uh, at DHH, it's about $9 billion. And we can't sustain it. And what, is, what do we do about it? Last year, according to Public Affairs Research Council, we had 900,000 visits to emergency rooms for routine care. Now, what does that mean? That means that our program, perfectly legal, pays for people to take a $700 ambulance ride. Strike that. Medicaid pays for tax, or, or, or Medicaid taxpayers pay for people to take a $700 ambulance ride to an emergency room to be treated for acne, to get a pregnancy test, to get obesity counseling, to have their eyes examined for glasses, uh, for, for, to, for diaper rash, for infertility, to discuss infertility treatment. We will pay for those things under Medicaid, but not in an emergency room. It costs five times more to treat a patient, to give a patient a pregnancy test in an ER than it does in a private clinic. It's killing us. And you know what we're doing about it at the Department of Health and Hospitals? Nothing. Zero. Nada. It's why our Medicaid spending, one of the reasons, is up 41% under this administration. Other states are doing something about it. Go over to Houston's Memorial Mob. Uh, Herman Hospital. They've got what's called a patient navigator program. There. They establish parish paraprofessionals at the entrance to every emergency room. When somebody shows up and wants to get a pregnancy test, they're told, "Look, we'll get you that pregnancy test. We'll get you an appointment, but you can't come here to the ER. This is for really, really, really sick people." And the law does not require. It. That's another reason. The law, federal, neither federal nor state law says that you have to treat somebody in an ER for an obvious non-emergency if they're not willing to pay for it. We can save tens, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars by doing what other states are already doing. We're doing nothing. I'm going to go about DHH spending, and when you were here last time, you talked about 900,000 uh, in one year visits to the emergency room uh, for non-emergency care. Could you care to elaborate as to why that seems to garner so little uh, attention uh, to, to, to put a spotlight on those facts uh, versus the inherent proclivity to say, let's raise more money, let's raise more money. Could you just comment on why you think some of the points you're making don't seem to be getting a whole lot of attention? Uh, well, co controlling costs while still being able to deliver a decent product is hard work. I mean, it's not as easy as just walking in and raising taxes and fees. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard work. I just watched what other states have done and done successfully, and it's clear to me that, that those states that are doing something to control their costs of the Medicaid program are doing it in part through controlling the, the, uh, the abuse of the emergency room. It doesn't mean these folks are going to go without care. But you can deliver, you can give a pregnancy test a lot cheaper in a private clinic than you can in an ER. Uh, you know, I probably told you all this last time, but I, I don't remember his name, but I got a call one time from an emergency room physician in New Orleans. He read something earlier. He said, Kennedy, you're right. He said, we stop me if I told you this before. But he said, you know, we've got a lady, an elderly lady, sweet as she can be. She comes to our emergency room every Saturday night. <laughs> and I said, well, why? She gets sick every Saturday? He said, no. She lives with her kids. Her kids don't want to pay for a babysitter. So they drop her here every Saturday night. And we got to give her a physical and talk to her. We have a good time. <laughs> and then I send the bill to Medicaid for a couple thousand dollars. And they pay it. Now, how much sense does that make? And you know what DHH is doing about it? Nothing. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. Yeah, now, I want to make a couple of comments about one of the suggestions that has recently been made um, by the state treasurer and senatorial one of them, 
who seems to have a great deal of observations about what government ought to do. Uh, yes. <clears throat> Since Treasurer Kennedy is not here to debate with you on that issue, I'll kind of serve as a surrogate. I noticed that you didn't address the Medicaid spending. He has stated before this press club that according to Public Affairs Research Council, there were 900,000 emergency room visits for non-emergency care. If you accept that figure from the Public Research Public Affairs First Council and you infer an average cost of $1,000, which I would believe is conservative, that would be $900 million. He also said it costs roughly five times the amount to deliver those services in an emergency room versus that of a private care physician. By my computation, that would be $720 million that the state is expending that it need not have to do if it installed things such as a patient navigator that he referred to at a Houston hospital. Would you care to address those cost savings that Treasurer Kennedy has said that this state can make that I didn't notice that you uh, addressed in your opening comments? Thank you. I think he's exactly right about wanting to drive Medicaid patients out of emergency rooms, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's the most expensive care that has to be provided, and the way to do that is to make certain you have enough physicians who are willing to see Medicaid patients to develop them in some kind of a primary care model that they're used to instead of running to the emergency room every time there's a problem. And so that is, a, that is an accurate statement and one of the objectives we would have, and that's part of what Bayou Health is designed to do, and frankly that's part of what I think Medicaid expansion, if it happens, will also be designed to do, to create a, a plan that can, that can provide Medicaid patients the same type of primary care that most of us that have insurance enjoy. That's a cost saving, and it's the appropriate thing to do for the Medicaid recipient. So I agree with him on that. Well, can I have one quick follow-up sure. then? If if the Medicaid system is already strained, as many contain that it, many con and you basically verified, because of not enough physicians to fulfill it, would not expanding Medicaid put further constraint on that, thereby potentially increasing emergency room use and driving up the cost that he alludes to even more? It could, if we're not successful in, through the Bayou Health Program of managed health care, to try and make certain more physicians are incentivized to be able to see those patients and to create a mechanism for patients to be able to go somewhere first before the emergency room. And I think some of the ancillary uh, clinics that are being set up close to hospitals uh, or is going to help that, and I think the hospitals themselves recognizing that they, they want to minimize emergency room traffic because they have to treat anyone who shows up at the emergency room, including those who don't have insurance, and they get very minimal compensation when that happens. So I think there's a systematic interest in doing exactly what you're talking about, and that will be something that I hope we're going to be addressing in a very meaningful way. Okay, thank you. 